Hello everyone, my name is Joshua Dennis and I'm founder and CEO of Dentistries. And I'm here today to give you a side video for helping you with some of the more complicated concepts in the Advanced Dentistries Solving and Programming Course video series. Now these concepts I'm showing you here today actually could help you in a wider variety of projects um, to do with computer science or ICT. I'm going to be explaining to you today how binary works. Now binary is the sort of it's the string of ones and zeros that you usually see about how um, people say computers can understand things. But what does binary action mean? What is a byte? What is a kilobyte? It's things like that, and that is what I'm here today to explain to you. Now, first thing we've got to understand is about how we usually count, because we don't usually think about this. If I show you the number 125. Well, what does that mean? Well, we can split that number up, okay, and we have got that is 1, that is 10, and that is 100. Now, what we know this means, that means it means 1 times 100, add 2 times 10, add 1 times 5. And that obviously equals 125. That is how we count using what we call base 10. And base 10 is how we normally count. So called because there are only 10 available numbers. And they are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. They're the only 10 numbers that exist in base 10. And you can use those 10 to make any variety of numbers. Like... 1,287 that is made of the number 1, 2, 8 and 7 ok now binary however only has two numbers and that is 1 and 0 so I'm just going to get a new sheet of paper and we're going to talk about binary so binary as um, works by using those number columns like I showed you before so denary or decimal or base 10 which is how we normally count, like I just showed you, as 1, 10, set face out, 100, 1,000, and onwards. And every time, you're timesing by 10 for each new column. Binary goes 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128 and onwards and if we split those up each time we're just times in by 2 1 times 2 is 2 2 times 2 is 4 4 times 4 is 8 and onwards now to sort of explain how this now works if I wanted to represent the number 16 in binary it would be That is 16. 1 times 16. So that equals 16 in base 10. And if I'm talking base 10, I'm just going to put a little subscript 10 like that, so we know. If I wanted to represent the number 40, let's draw a line here. 40 would be 32, add 8. And then I add in my zeros. That equals 40. Now, this string of eight ones and zeros, that represents a byte of data in computing. The highest number a byte can store is the number 255. Now, we say it can store 256 values, though, because whilst it is able to store up to the number 255, we are forgetting about one number there. And that number, of course, is 0. So that's 256 values. And the way we can work it out is we take that last column, which is 128, we times it by 2, that is 256, 
that's the amount of values we can now have in here. And then we minus 1, and that gives 255, five, the highest number of values we can get in here. That automatically tells me, though, that the next column here so is, um, the, is, the, is the answer to this times 2, which is 256. Now that is the next value in that column, simply because I said here, you know, 2 times four, two times 2, that's the next column, that's 4. 2 times 4 is the next column, that's 8. And that's how it works in binary. Whereas base 10, like I said before, 1 times 10 is 10. 10 times 10, 100. 100 times 10, 1,000. 1,000 times 10, I know the next column is 10,000. Okay, so how can we work out then how much is in 2 bytes of data? What I do is I take 200, I'm actually getting a new piece of paper, that's what I'm going to do. I take 250. Um, 56, because that's the number of values I can store in one byte. I then times it by 256, which gives me 6536, sorry, 65536. I'm going to put that number here now, 65536. That's the number of values, including zero. But the highest number we can store is obviously minus 1, and that equals 65,535. That is the highest number. I'm going to put that little base 10 subscript thingy in. That is the highest number we can store in 2 bytes. 2 bytes is a string of 16 ones and zeros, whereas 1 byte is a string of 8 ones and zeros. So, in these sort of videos that I do, when I say a B variable that I talk about, like here, we talk about B variables, so something like B0, which we came across in the uh, loops, so B0 equals 0, and I said the highest number a B variable can store is number 255, you might now be able to see that that's because a B variable such as B0 or B1 or B2, the height the highest number they can store is 255 because B means byte. Now we will come across in other videos a W variable, such as W1, W2, W3, W1 in there as well, W0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 onwards. Now W there stands for word. Now the reason that is in a in some types of data transmission, letters are done using two bytes. That's just because we've got so many different letters, we need a high number that can store all the different types of letters and all the different types of alphabets. Think that you've got the Latin-based ones, such as English and French, but then you've also got to have, um, you can't just have the letter E, you also need to have the letter E with that accent, and the letter E with that accent, and the letter E with that accent, for example, or you've got the letter C and then the letter C with that uh, accent, but then you've also got the entire Hebrew alphabet, the Arabic alphabet, the Chinese, the Japanese, um, completely different alphabets, Russian, all these different letters that aren't Latin based, even Greek, think Omega. You might think, well, that isn't such an important thing. Greek is a, you know, it's an, this sort of ancient Greek here, but then you've also got things like physics. In physics, we use that to represent the ohm. Well, how can I learn my physics if I can't type it? And that is why we use, or that's why we have all these different numbers. And then you might also think, well, why do all the English ones need to have Japanese letters on? Well, in terms of data transmission, that is very important because we want all computers to be able to understand each other. Otherwise, think about how complicated it would be if I got an email from someone in China. Google Translate wouldn't work because Google Translate wouldn't be able to understand it. And so this is an important concept. So our word variable stores up to the number 65,535. It is made of two bytes. Actually here it's made of the variables b1 times b2. I say b1 times, really, it's b1 comma b2. We've got all the numbers in b1 then all the numbers in B2, in B0, sorry, not B2, silly me. So what it goes is that might be 100, 
and then that might be 25. So what that is, that's 10,025 as the final number, like that. Okay, now that is a complicated thing to try and get your head around, I will admit, it's very complex, but just think of it that if I ever say we're going to use a word variable or a w variable, we're using a variable that can store that many numbers in it. If we're using a b variable or bytes variable, we're using a variable that can store that many numbers in it. Now, one final concept about this is about how binary is actually used for data storage. Now, what we really mean is you've got to imagine we have an array of switches, and I'm just going to represent each switch by a box. Okay, so we've got all of these switches here. And that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight switches now, okay? I want to store the um, I want to tell those switches that I want to store uh, the number, uh, let's do the number 20, shall we? Okay, so we can write on top of that 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 1, 2, 8. Right, if I want to store the number 20, I know that I need to do 4 and 16. So that means that switch is on, and that switch is on. All the other switches are now off. Okay, so I've now got 20 stored in there. Now, this is a very um, basic way of data storage that used to be used. So, um, when I say, for example, in the programs, loop until pin C.3 equals 1, 1 means on. If I said until 0, that would then mean off. So I hope that is a kind of a basic way of explaining that concept here when we came to loops, about how until pin C3 equals 0, it means off, or 1, it means on. And in if statements as well, if pin C.3 equals 1, that means if it is pressed, if that button has been pressed, then perform the following function. So that's just been a basic introduction to binary and bytes and basic binary counting. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, please take a look at the other videos in the Dendritry Soldering, Dendritry's Advanced Soldering and Programming course. Um, there are more coming, and I do hope you enjoy this, and have a good day. Thank you very much for listening, and goodbye.